Hi, welcome to welcome to the class of 2025. Tonight uh, is our future freshman information night. We are going to uh, plan on sharing some important information with you guys uh, about the high school. We are. You want to take this real fast? So our slides are not, uh, not transitioning, so we'll get with that in just a little bit. Uh, but we would like to welcome everybody. Welcome to our, our eighth graders who will be joining us next year uh, at Hargrave High School. Uh, tonight, the purpose of this is to, to introduce our administrative team, our counselors, our assistant principals, uh, and then also uh, go over some important things. Uh, over the next week or so, we will be uh, selecting courses. Our counselors will be coming to talk to you guys about uh, selecting our courses for next year, looking at our... Uh, our endorsements and everything that's important for high school graduation. And uh, we want to take this time tonight to be able to make sure that we highlight the important stuff that you need to know so that way you make the best and most informed decisions uh, within the next week or so and as we start thinking about high school. Uh, there will be a lot of information tonight. We have emailed uh, the presentation out to you guys a couple times. We can also send it again if, if someone didn't get that. Uh, we will also be recording this tonight. And then we'll be sending that link out later this week. So if you need to go back and refer to that, our counselors also have a website that'll have a lot of this information on that, along with our course catalog. Um, and then also tonight, we wanna be able to answer questions uh, to make sure that we're, we're addressing everything and all the questions that you may have. So if you guys will look uh, on your screen, I believe at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A. Uh, if you have a question that comes up that we haven't answered, uh, go ahead and use that Q&A function and put your question in there. Uh, we have some people monitoring those, and at the end of our uh, session here tonight, we'll come back and we'll go through each one of those questions and answer those the best that we can. Uh, if we get uh, a lot of questions or if we get a, a question that uh, we're just not comfortable with, with the answer because it may depend on a couple of different things or it may be specific to a, an individual child, uh, we will do like a, a FAQ and we'll send those questions out uh, later on this week also. So uh, with that, Further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. I would like to let you know who will be speaking to you tonight. Um, I'm the campus principal, Adam Skinner. Our campus assistant principals will be talking to you guys, uh, Ms. LaTanya Dorsey. Currently, she oversees the students whose last names begin with A through G. Mr. Glenn Turner is our assistant principal who oversees the students H through O. And then Mr. Rob Murray is our assistant principal who oversees the students P through Z. Our counselor, team consists of Ms. Christy Murray, who will be speaking to you. Uh, her alpha is last names A through L. And then Ms. Shelly Reyna, her alpha is students' last names M through Z. Um, again, Ms. Murray and Ms. Reyna will be coming to talk to our eighth grade students uh, very soon about making their course selections. And so our students will actually get to meet them face-to-face -face soon at the middle school. There's a few other people that will talk to us tonight. Our CTE director, Ms. Lindsay Mart. She will talk to us about our endorsements and our certifications, those kind of things. Uh, and we have our campus dual credit and AP liaison. That's Ms. Joanne Taylor, who will talk to us about the differences in dual credit versus AP um, and, and selecting the right level for our students. Uh, Coach McEachern can't be with us tonight, but he's our district athletic director. Uh, most of our eighth graders usually know Coach Mack uh, by this point in time. So any athletic kind of questions that, that may be asked, we will save those uh, and direct those to Coach McEachern so we can get those questions answered. Tonight, he's at a basketball game and wasn't able to be with us. So I, at this time, I'm gonna call Mr. Murray, our assistant principal up, to talk to us about student attendance. Hey, good evening. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're super glad that you're here. Uh, my name is Robert Murray. Um, again, I do work with your uh, student if last name is P through Z. <clears throat> I'm just gonna to talk to you very briefly about something that is um, super pivotal um, uh, and, and important in terms of your academic success, and that is uh, student attendance, okay? Um, so from this point in your education career from kindergarten up to now, um, you have been basically promoted year by year. Um, high school credits work quite a bit different. And in order to achieve a credit in class, number one, you have to pass the class, but number two, you do have to be there 90% of the time. That's what the state uh, mandates in order to provide credit for, for a particular class. Um, our compulsory attendance states also that we must file um, when we have excessive unexcused absences. And our, our threshold is generally 10 unexcused in a six-month period. We don't really want to talk about that because we want to work with you to ensure that 
um, providing documentation will avert any opportunity for us to do that. Um, when I say providing um, documentation, what that means is it's really, really important for you to bring doctor's notes, dentist notes, um, orthodontist notes, um, parent notes. Um, really what we're concerned with more than anything else is that a parent knows where a student is. Um, we will always take those notes, um, doctors and, and dentist notes, it, pretty much no time frame. but as far as a parent note is concerned, we do have to receive that within 72 hours of the absence. Um, our teachers have a lot of great things to share with your student and uh, we, we love having you here. Uh, we're gonna try and provide the best uh, high school experience um, possible for you. Uh, we're excited about you guys coming up and being Falcons and we've got a lot to share with you. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Latanya Dorsey. I am one of the assistant principals and I uh, see the kids that alphabet A through G. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about student organization and skills. Did I skip a slide? Okay, so it's important that, yeah, that is it. So it's important that you uh, read through your teacher's syllabus and students just so you know, and parents so that you know as well, that uh, the teachers do send home a syllabus basically the first week of school. Um, in there, there's gonna be lots of important things. It's gonna be their classroom rules, their policies, um, how the course is graded. There will also probably be some sort of sign-off sheet and typically that's for a, you know, an easy participation grade for you to get turned back into them. Another thing that you want to be sure that you're checking a whole lot is your student portal. In your student portal, there's gonna be things such as your attendance, um, your, you know, it's gonna help you be able to find your, your Canvas app, which I know that you guys have been using when you were in junior high, um, but all of that stuff's gonna be found in your student portal, along with any other apps that your teachers may have for you guys to go. Okay. Technical difficulties, right? Uh, the calendar reminders, this is gonna be found in your Canvas. It's um, also gonna be with your teachers, maybe they'll be you know, giving you a different calendar. Sometimes they do that for the pacing of the class. Um, so be sure that you're looking into that. Also in Canvas, I'm sure as you guys have been aware, you can look ahead into Canvas and you can see tests that are coming up or major projects that are gonna be due or assignments. Um, so be sure that you're paying attention to those calendar reminders. Um, and then your teacher's board, that's the boards that's actually in the classroom. This is where you're gonna find announcements um, they also will put on there what maybe they're doing the following weeks, um, but that's just some kids just like to see it on the board and our teachers will do that. They're also going to talk about what their current objective is and things that you may be currently learning in your class. Um, and then also, also remember your Canvas announcements. Those are important as well. Okay, I keep repeating it for you just in case you missed it. Um, so the next thing is how important it is when you're in class, especially those of you who are gonna be taking advanced classes. Note taking is very, very important. A lot of times note taking looks like a lot of different things. It can be an actual PowerPoint point that you're gonna be taking notes off of, or it might be a reading that you're gonna to have to decipher through and find you know, a, your own summary. But it's very important that you find the way that you take notes yourself. And it's gonna be something that makes sense to you in your own words. Um, then the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is the fact that at the high school, our on level and our advanced classes, we do a lot of project based things. So our assessments can be paper pen tests, but there's also gonna be projects that you'll be doing as well. So you wanna be aware of those deadlines, um, you know, because that's kind of what it's all about is making sure that you complete things on time and get it turned in and do a good job at that. So again, don't wait till the last minute, don't procrastinate. Use some of those tools that we talked about before, like possibly putting something on your calendar or setting reminders in your phone to have an alarm go off to, to remind you to study for a test or that a project is coming up. So those are the, the, some of the key things um, that can possibly help you when you get here to high school. So next, Turner. Thank you, Ms. Dorsey. I'm Glenn Turner, assistant principal over last names, H through O. 
Uh, many of you are going to remember me from the middle school. Uh, I worked with you during your sixth and seventh grade year, and I truly wish that you were in an auditorium in front of me right now, uh, as opposed to what we're currently doing. Uh, we were all ready to get back to life as normal. Uh, one of my other roles here at the high school is campus testing coordinator. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what you know as the STAR test. At the high school level, we're going to call it the EOC test. That is the end of course. A little bit different. It's kind of the basic uh, STAR test that you're used to. However, you're going to have five tests total. You'll have English 1, English 2, Algebra 1, Biology, and U.S. History. Now, it's extremely important that you take these seriously because you must pass all five in order to graduate. Your teachers are going to be uh, preparing you uh, to, to be uh, successful in these tests. Uh, so it's extremely important that you pay attention to those classes, do everything they ask you to do, and you will then be successful. However, if you have any issues with those tests, we do offer retakes. So you will take the initial test in the spring, and then you'll be able to do retest in June in the summer and then December in the fall. So once again, uh, listen to your teachers, do everything you're supposed to, and you can absolutely be successful on these tests. Uh, Dr. Skinner would like to remind you to access that Q&A portion of uh, the point that you're looking at right now if you have any questions. Thank you. Hello there. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Christy Murray, and I'm counselor for students' last names A through L. And I know we are giving you a lot of information. Just want to remind you that you don't have to memorize this. Um, we're taking it step by step and just giving you kind of an overview of high school. And uh, I know most of you probably logged in to hear about scheduling. And so an overview of scheduling is um, that we will be at the middle school next week to meet with eighth graders. And we're gonna meet in their careers classes and uh, talk to them about endorsements and how to log into edu things. So this is a process. It starts next week and the students will have access to edu things until the last day of February. And after that, um, you can still change your student schedule by emailing us or calling us all the way through June 15th. So we give you about four and a half months to make any changes that you need to. And this also allows you time to talk to your student's current teacher. If you want us to connect you to high school teachers um, to find out more about their classes, we'll be happy to do that. So just email us in any way that we can help you and, and we will be happy to. The EduThings um, tab is accessed through the student portal only. So it's not available in the parent portal, but your student will learn how to access that next week. House Bill 5 requires that we get a parent or adult family member signature at the end of scheduling, and that is available also in EduThings. There will be an instructional video on the high school webpage that is in Spanish and English, and that will walk you through the steps to schedule, um, especially for our remote students and for parents that want to know exactly how to click where to select the courses that the student needs. As far as endorsements, if you think of it as a like a college major or a career path, it's just an interest that the student has and a commitment to take four or more credits in a specific sequence. So endorsements can change. Um, it gets a little tricky, of course, as you get to be in 11th and 12th grade, but we will help you through that process. Uh, remember that it's not set in stone. Your child has learned about the endorsements through their eighth grade careers class, so they're gonna be very familiar with this. And I uh, just wanna remind you not to stress. I know that's easy for me to say, but we're all here to help you through the process and we've allowed plenty of time to uh, meet with you if you need to. We can Zoom with you. Uh, email is a fast way to catch us and, and of course phone calls. And we'll answer any question that you have about tonight or anything else about high school. Uh, we'll help you make sure that you feel confident in your child's selections of their courses and endorsement. So just, just remember that, that this is a process and tonight just starts that four month process. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murray. My name is Shelly Reyna and I'm the high school counselor if your name uh, ends in M through Z. I'm going to talk to you about the slide as soon as I can find it. Okay. I'm going to talk to you about the graduation requirements um, for the foundation plan with endorsements, which is the basic um, graduation plan that everyone in the state of Texas uh, is under. 
And it has, uh, everyone's required to take four credits of English, four credits of math, four credits of science, and four credits of social studies by the time you graduate. So in those four years, you'll end up with 16 credits of those four cores. You're also required to take two credits worth of foreign languages consecutively. You'll also take one credit of a fine arts. You'll also take one credit of PE. And you'll also take a total of four credits from an, your endorsement, which is the um, your endorsement pathway, which we'll talk about again, as Ms. Uh, Murray noted, when we go to the middle school, or um, you can also take them from elective. So for a total of 26 credits, it sounds like a lot, but I promise you, there's so many students that end up with more than 26. So I know it sounds like a lot, but it can it can be done. And again, like she said, don't stress. We're here to help you through the whole process. Okay, another thing that I know you've heard about is what's called the distinguished level of achievement. All that is, is another little caveat that goes on the transcript when you graduate. And in order to achieve that, um, you have to take Algebra 2. And you have to take Algebra 2 if you wanna be considered for the top 10. Um, or for automatic admission to the Texas public universities. So that's what that is all about, that distinguished level of achievement. Also, our GPA policy. The only courses that are considered or go into calculating that GPA policy are the core classes. And when I say core classes, those are the um, cores or English, math, science, and social studies, the four cores. Um, and those core classes are weighted according to the following. They're uh, on-level courses are 4.0s, advanced and dual credit courses are on a 5.0 scale, and AP courses are on a 6.0 scale. And all that is explained in great detail in the uh, course guide, which is found on the um, webpage. The hair, um, Hargrave High School webpage, you can find it there. And finally, there is a step-by-step -step, um, course selection PowerPoint that's also in the Hargrave High School website under the bulletin board. Um, it's in English and in Spanish, and um, you can also find the course guide that not only explains the GPA policy, but it explains all the courses in detail. So if you have any question about what exactly a course is, and you want to know more about it before you sign up for that course, you can look in the course guide uh, about that as well. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to our um, career and technology director next. Awesome. Hi, my name is Lindsay Mark. I'm the career and technical education uh, director here at Hargrave High School. Um, I'm going to talk to you tonight about the endorsement options, as well as the career um, certifications that are available through our CTE classes. So as Ms. Murray said before, endorsements are more like picking out a college major. Um, so you've got to study that they're going to follow and then pathways with under, underneath that. So the five endorsement options are STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, business and industry, public service arts and humanities and multidisciplinary. Um, there's some benefits to having endorsements. We have a richer student engagement because the students are following a plan through their entire four years of school. They're better prepared for continuing education beyond high school and or entering the workforce because they have spent that much time in those courses. Um, and as she also said before, it can be changed with the completion of a form, um, including a parent signature. So even though you choose it your freshman year, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to stick with that for all four years, and that's okay. So we do have a plan to get that fixed if needed. So the first one I'm going to talk about today is STEM, and it's science, technology, engineering, and math. It does require completion of Algebra 2, Chemistry, and Physics. There's three different options. You have a science um, option, which is biology, chemistry, physics, plus two advanced science courses beyond physics. You have advanced manufacturing and machinery mechanics, which um, is our robotics um, and rocketry pathway. And then we have a science option, which is algebra one, geometry, 
three algebra two plus two advanced math courses beyond algebra two. Business and industry includes um, our ag mechanics, welding classes, animal science, construction, which is now called carpentry. We have graphics and audio video classes, as well as business management, hospitality, and tourism. Um, the business and industry endorsement in the areas listed on the screen requires a progressive sequence of four credits in at least one of the bulleted courses of study. Public services, um, that includes teaching and training, healthcare diagnostics, diagnostics, which includes our health science classes where they get the certifications, law and public services, and then um, our ROTC program. Public services endorsement requires the four credits in at least one of these bulleted courses of study as well. The next one is arts and humanities. This is going to be world geography, world history, US history, government, eco, um, as well as psychology or European history, or they can take four credits in Spanish or Italian or two credits in two different foreign languages. Um, for example, you could take Spanish one and Spanish two followed by Italian one and Italian two for the four credits. And then a sequence of four credits in art, band, choir, dance, or theater. So all of those are the options under arts and humanities. Multidisciplinary, um, the multidisciplinary studies endorsement requires completion of at least one of the following. Um, I'll be honest and tell you that multidisciplinary, the easiest way to remember this is this kind of is the old four by four. So this is going to really focus on the core classes with some extra, um, extra classes on the side. So four additional advanced credits from within one endorsement area or from various endorsement areas that prepare the student to either successfully enter post-secondary education without the need for remediation or successfully enter the workforce. Um, it does require you to have four credits in English, math, science, and social studies, um, or four AP and dual credit courses selected from English, math, science, social studies, fine arts, or foreign language. And lastly, um, just about the CTE courses and the certifications, we offer 13 different pathways within the five endorsements. Um, Certifications that we currently offer are an AWS welding certification. We have students that take cosmetology operator license, um, CPR. Our health science classes also do the EKG and the phlebotomy. Both of those are career ready certifications so students can um, get jobs right after they get those certifications. Um, NCCR, which is a construction based certification that a lot of the plants um, in industry uses. OSHA um, for welding and construction, they use the OSHA safety course, as well as uh, serve safe food handlers and manager um, and the Texas master florist um, certification is available for our floral classes. Okay, next I'm gonna hand it over to the dual credit liaison. Uh, good evening, I'm Joanne Taylor and I am the dual credit coordinator and AP coordinator. Our goal here at Hargrave High School is that your student is college and career ready when they graduate. So they have the opportunities to pursue their post-secondary education goals. First, I'd like to just give you a little comparison side by side of uh, advanced placement and dual credit classes. To compare the level of rigor between these classes, they're very comparable. The rigor for advanced placement classes are college level determined by college board and the AP teacher of that, that course. For dual credit classes, the rigor is college level as well, determined by Lee College and the college professor for that specific course. Students for AP classes earn uh, high school credits while they're taking the AP class. And then upon taking the AP test, as long as they make a three or better, they will earn college credit for that AP class. Um, on the flip side, a little bit differently, in dual credit classes, the student is enrolled in the college class and they earn their college and high school credit simultaneously. So they earn the credit on the college side and it transfers back to the hard grade side. So at the same time. Transferability for AP and for dual credit, as long as a student in an AP class makes at least a three 
So that's on a scale of one to five. So at least a three on a course exam, then most colleges and universities do accept this AP score. I highly recommend that you go to the specific college website and view their AP correlation on how their AP scores transfer from the course to their course in their specific college. Uh, college transfer for dual credit, a little bit different. We do the common core for the dual credit classes. So the transfer credits will go to those exact classes at the college level. So at the state universities and most private colleges accept them as well. There are fees for AP and for dual credit. So the cost for the AP exam this year is $95 per exam. And then the cost for dual credit classes is $125 per semester per class. We did talk about earlier the GPA differences. Uh, AP is on a six point grade scale and dual credit is on a five point grade scale. And then I want to encourage you as you are planning your child's four years, please look in advance, look at where they're going to go to college and a degree plan where they're going to be attending. So kind of look in advance and then check out requirements that those specific colleges have for your student. And then we tailor the AP classes, we tailor the dual credit classes to fit your students' needs. And so as Ms. Murray said, it's a, about a four month process to get everything in line and this is just for the ninth grade and we tweak it each year. We do offer TSIA, SAT and ACT either here at Hargrave or on Saturdays here at Hargrave. The TSIA is a college ready score entrance exam for dual credit classes for the dual credit program for eighth grade through 12, 11th grade. And then for college entrance for seniors that are going to either a junior college or even a four year university. So due to COVID, most universities are not requiring the SAT at this time. However, they want the students to have some sort of college level exam criteria. So the TSIA has been, is what's being used right now. We have college board that offers prep material for the TSIA. For SAT, it is required. I would, I would say required for 11th and 12th graders. Um, not all colleges are, are requiring because of COVID. In uh, 8th through 11th, we give PSAT. That's highly recommended that your student take those as practice for the SAT. Khan Academy is our, our online source that we use for, um, for studying and for prepping. So Khan Academy for SAT and College Board for TSIA. And then we do also offer SAT prep, or excuse me, ACT prep here on campus. And the counselors and the counseling office will be announcing when they're going to do the preps for those classes. And I say that they're required, 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 but because of COVID, everything's uh, up in the air, but the colleges would like for our students to have college level scores to be able to place them correctly into their college level classes. Next. All right, so um, we talked a lot about information about our, our endorsements, our academic pathways, uh, whether we're doing dual credit or maybe uh, advanced placement tests. Um, probably the most important thing that I hope that our students and our parents get out of tonight uh, is the importance of getting involved. Uh, there's countless research out uh, that shows the importance of a student being connected to their campus, uh, being a part of something that's bigger than them. And so we challenge our students every year, um, especially our freshmen coming onto our campus, to find something to be involved in. Uh, what you're looking at right now is, is kind of just a list of our student involvement. Uh, all of these are just different opportunities that our students have to be a part of our campus. Uh, one of the things that we pride ourselves on in, in Huffman and Hargrave High School is that we're always gonna be the very best that we can be. Um, our athletic programs, our ag programs, our ROTC, our fine arts programs, all of our programs uh, compete at the state level a lot um, and we're very competitive. Um, and we're very proud of that. And we want to establish that sense of pride in our students, um, especially our eighth graders coming up to our high school. Um, so they become a part of that and they become immersed into to what it means to be a, a Hargrave uh, high school student and, and what it means to be a Falcon and represent our community. Um, our students go out and, and do a lot of things to represent our community. And it's very important that, um, that they get that connection and that they serve 
serve our campus, and they also go back and serve our community. So we would challenge all of our eighth graders to make sure you find something to get involved in. Uh, with COVID, uh, some of these, these programs haven't been as uh, engaged this year due to some, some of the problems that we've had to encounter. Uh, next year, we, we hope that we can pick up and, and keep going, but uh, no matter what world we're living in at that point in time, the, the most important thing, and if there's one thing we ask our students to take away from tonight, uh, it's that they get involved in something. Be a part of, of Hargrave High School and, uh, and be a part of representing our campus and our, and our community. Um, so kind of what do we do now? So what are our next steps? So you can check out our course guide uh, on the uh, HHS website. Uh, we also will be sending a link out with that whenever we send a link to the video recording of this. Uh, so that way you have that uh, accessible to yourself. Uh, that course guide, again, like Ms. Rana said, will explain the different courses, what each course means, kind of a brief description of those courses. Uh, so that way they can, that way you guys can make the best informed decision. Um, one of the most important things when we're talking about selecting our schedule for next year uh, and, and looking at our four-year plan for high school, uh, it is crucial that our current eighth graders talk to their current eighth grade teacher. Um, no one can better advise them on what, so, which way to select, whether AP, advanced, dual credit, on level. Uh, no one can advise them any better than their current eighth grade teachers. Um, our eighth grade teachers work with them day in and day out. They have a good idea of, of the different programs that the high school has to offer and the level of rigor that, there's, that they may have to offer. Um, a lot of our students uh, just sign up for, for our advanced classes. And when they get to high school, we're preparing them now for an AP test. Um, and essentially getting rewarded college credit. Um, and it's a much different experience than what it is uh, maybe at the middle school uh, where we're just working on those building blocks. Now at the high school, uh, we've built up to that point. Now we are moving fast. We're moving very rigorously um, so that we can make sure we're meeting the thresholds that we have to for the college board to be ready for uh, either the AP test or for adult credit college hours. Um, and so it's very important that, that, that our students, your eighth grade students talk to their eighth grade teachers on that. Um, also, a lot of our elected teachers at the uh, middle school, uh, also, uh, I believe their careers class has, has had a lot of coverage about our endorsements. Uh, Ms. Taylor's been over to talk to them. Our counselors will be there working with them on their course selection. So um, we encourage our students and, and parents to ask questions so that we were selecting the right path. Um, those paths can change, but if we really want to meet the needs of, of our student at their individual basis, we want to go ahead and make sure we're making the right decisions beginning with their freshman year. Uh, GPA does start counting their freshman year. We, those classes make a difference. And so we want to make sure that we're getting the student in the right class uh, to make sure that we're meeting their needs. Um, after the students meet with our, our counselors on February 10th and 11th, uh, you want to make sure that you, you take a look at that course selection instruction presentation. Make sure that we are uh, following the plan that the counselors lay out for you guys uh, so we can get that four year plan uh, in, into edgy things. Um, Congratulations to the class of 2025. You've almost survived your middle school years. We're very excited about you coming to join us at the high school next year. Uh, and we really look forward to working with you. Uh, parents, I would challenge you to reach out to us with any questions that you have um, as we transition through this process. With COVID going on, we don't really understand uh, or, or know what to expect in the future. Um, however, uh, I can assure you that we're gonna be here to answer those questions and we're gonna try to make this transition as seamless as possible uh, for both you as a parent and then both uh, also for your child. Um, at this point in time, we have, some, we have received some questions, and I would go ahead and challenge you to, uh, if you have some questions that we haven't covered, this kind of concludes our, our information for tonight. It's, it's a lot of information, but there's a whole lot more information that we would, could cover. Uh, we just don't want to bombard you with too much information. You'd be on information overload. So if you have some questions, use the Q&A at the bottom of, the, of your page um, and go ahead and submit those questions. And so at this point in time, we're going to go through and start answering the questions that we've received. Um, I'm gonna call a few people to come help me answer those questions, depending on the, the question and the, the level of expertise of our staff here. Uh, but the first question that we received is what grade does the EOC test apply to? So the question is, when do students start taking their EOC exams? Um, remember our course exams, students have to pass to be able to graduate. Uh, that is slightly different than some of the, the past start tests that they've had, uh, where we, we, have to, we have to meet this one class requirement uh, in order to graduate. And so sometimes that means a student may have to take it a couple different times. But the question is, is when does this, what grade level does this apply to? So this applies to Algebra 1. So if a student um, is currently in Algebra 1 in eighth grade, they'll be taking the EOC this year. That's the same high school EOC that our students take at the high school. If a student's enrolled in eighth grade math, then next year they'll be enrolled in Algebra 1. 
um, and they'll be taking uh, the Algebra 1 EOC. We also have English 1, which is freshman, English 2, which is our sophomore level English class. Our, for our science is the biology test. Um, students who are currently enrolled in Algebra 1, those students typically would take biology their freshman year. So that would be an EOC, they would take their freshman year. Um, students who are in eighth grade math, we highly recommend that you take IPC, which is Integrated Physics and Chemistry. Um, and then you would take biology your sophomore year, which then you would be taking that EOC. And remember the EOC is attached to the course itself. And then all students will take US history in 11th grade. Um, and that's your, typically that's our final EOC that a student has to take. So again, that's English one, English two, biology, U.S. history and algebra one, okay? The next question that we received are, are Spanish and ASL the only foreign language options at the high school? So we currently offer um, Spanish face-to-face um, -face instruction. We have ASL through a program that, that provides that instruction to our students. Um, and we currently have Italian. Uh, unfortunately, because of our, our availability within courses and our course loads, um, Italian is one that fills up really fast. And so a lot of times our freshmen aren't available to get into Italian initially. Um, but uh, currently this year uh, at the high school campus, we have Spanish, ASL, and Italian. However, the Italian is, is typically very limited to freshmen because of the numbers. And so if we wanna go ahead and start working on, those, on our foreign language courses, uh, we would wanna go ahead and get started on those, uh, our freshman year with Spanish or ASL. It is important to remember that those credits have to be in the exact same foreign language. We can't take Spanish one and ASL one and get credit for graduation. It has to be Spanish one and Spanish two or ASL one or ASL two. Italian, if it opens up and we have room, we, we will offer it to our freshmen. Uh, but with foreign languages, it's all based on our adult uh, availability because we have limited adults who can teach those specific uh, uh, languages. And so uh, Italian is always kind of a hit or miss. So we, we Spanish and ASL are our two main ones. The next question, uh, I'm gonna have Ms. Murray come up. Ms. Murray, if you would join me. Uh, the question is, is, are there different plans with different amount of credits needed to graduate? So Ms. Murray, if you wanna answer the graduation question. Absolutely. So House Bill 5 is the foundation high school plan with endorsement and that requires 26 credits. So that's what every student needs at the high school to graduate. All right, and our students, do typically get much more than 26 credits because of an eight period day. Uh, they have many um, options to gain credits. So the important thing is that we're meeting those graduation requirements and then getting those extra elective credits. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Uh, Ms. Taylor is going to come up. We have a question about does Huffman offer core complete option for graduation? Core complete is a, is a dual credit question ultimately. So I'm going to have Ms. Taylor, a dual credit liaison, to come up and, and answer that question. Uh, yes, we do. So the question is, does Huffman offer core complete options for graduation? So core complete is a college core complete, which is math, English, science, social studies, a fine art, a social behavior class, and a speech or a communications class. Those are our core complete, and we do offer all of those through the dual credit program at the college level. Do you want me to answer the next one? Uh, yeah, can just read okay, question. so I also have a couple more questions. I'll go ahead and answer at the same time. The next one is a dual credit question. It says, can the students start taking dual credit courses their freshman year? Yes, they can. Um, as long as they pass the TSI test and they are college ready. So I have gone over to the middle school in the fall in December and I spoke with the careers classes. So half of your students have already met me. We spoke about dual credit and AP. We spoke about the TSI test and we spoke about scheduling and endorsements. This Thursday and Friday, I will be meeting them again and talking to the next set of um, careers classes and talking about the dual credit for freshmen also and the dual credit process. Uh, there is one more for me and it says, when do students get the option to take college classes? So students can take dual credit classes upon doing the dual credit process process, which means applying to Lee College, practicing, studying for the exam, and taking the TSIA exam and being college ready. So they have to score a high enough score to be college ready. Then we go through and we sit down and individually tailor their next four years, depending on whether they want to do the Common Core, they want to do the Associates Plan, 
or do they want to take criminal justice classes or cosmetology classes? And each program that we offer is kind of individually tailored to our students' um, needs, I guess you could say. I have another question pop up. How many credits do you need to graduate high school with an associate's degree? All right. So associate's degree is 60 college credits. It's the first two years of college. So they'll need 60 credits. And actually our associate's degree plan is 62 college credits. And that is 20 college classes spread over a four year. So their two year degree is spread from freshman year to uh, senior year. And or some students don't take dual credit as a freshman, they start in the 10th grade and they're still able to complete their two year degree in three years, sophomore, junior and senior year of high school. That, those are great questions and, and associate's degrees. Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, we encourage our students who, who are interested in that to, to talk to Ms. Taylor, ask those questions. Uh, core complete also uh, is, is a great way to go to knock out a lot of those core classes that a lot of the universities have to offer. <laughs> Many of the time we're making decisions about um, early our college classes um, or even our AP programs. Um, we really encourage uh, you to talk to Ms. Taylor. And Ms. Taylor also would encourage you also to talk to the universities that you're looking to go to. Uh, every university has a different set of requirements, a separate, different set of expectations. Uh, depends on what your major is gonna be, whether they'll accept one course or not the other. Um, and so it's, it's really important um, that we start having those conversations with universities, uh, with colleges, uh, and with the interest that we may have as students. Um, it's, it's not as important as your freshman year, but as we pro progress through high school, we definitely encourage our students to start asking those kind of questions. So uh, we, got a, we received a question uh, that asks about uh, band and athletics. Um, are they allowed at the same time? I think this particular question was about uh, band and cross country. Uh, so what I will tell you is that we, we do have, uh, sometimes we have scheduling conflicts. Uh, we usually try to work those out. Our counselors are amazing at trying to figure the puzzle pieces out to get our kids aligned to the programs uh, in which they, they wish to take. Um, however, sometimes there are conflicts that, there, that we can't resolve through our master schedule. So when that happens, uh, we have our students talk to their individual sponsors or their coach or their advisor, whoever that may be, on, on opportunities of how we can work around that. Uh, very few times do we have situations that we just can't simply work around. So, for, for example, I think this is cross country and band. Um, we won't know typically what band they're even enrolled in until later on. Um, and so we just encourage our students just to sign up for the band. Um, the athletics, our coaches tell us which athletic period the students go in. Uh, typically our freshmen uh, are in a different period than our varsity. Uh, but there are some sports like cross country, for example, that sometimes if we have a scheduling conflict, I know this year we had a situation with soccer where we had a student who had a scheduling conflict and the coach allowed them to, to jump up to a different athletic period. So um, our, our coaches and our staff on our campus understand the value and the importance of our students being involved and being a well-rounded student. And so we always do our best to work through those situations and those conflicts. However, uh, in ingenuity right now, I would tell you that um, it should just let you pick those courses, correct, Ms. Lurie? Um, ingenuity shouldn't be limiting you that. So if we're having some, some issues in ingenuity, uh, I would highly suggest that you uh, either email one of our counselors. Uh, Ms. Turner and Ms. Menzik at the middle school um, are familiar with ingenuity. Uh, and so they also could, could help you with that. Uh, but again, we were trying to work through all those conflicts. We've had uh, we, multiple years, we've had uh, band members marching at the football game at halftime uh, in their football uniform. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we had a student the other night who was at the ag show showing and immediately went put on our basketball uniform so she could uh, play in the basketball game. Uh, that's the kind of student that we want. So I can assure you that we're going to do our best to make sure that we meet the needs of that student. Uh, the, another question that we received is, can you touch uh, on the possibility or, or talk, talk about the real estate class that's listed? Um, so first of all, our real estate class, we actually had goals of trying to get that incorporated this year, but due to COVID, uh, it was something that we weren't able to get to. Uh, that is also something that I believe to be able to actually get your certification, you have to be 18. So this would be something that we would be looking long-term uh, towards the end of our high school career. Uh, but what I would tell you is that with our certifications, we always try to look to the, to the interests of our students. What do our students want? Uh, each year, our students do a career inventory survey. Uh, that tells us, gives us data so that we can come back and, and make some informed decisions. And we've had a little bit of interest in that. And so the real estate program that 
we were looking at doing was going to be an after school program. Uh, it was going to be a fraction of the cost of what it would take uh, for just an adult to go get their certification. Um, and then we also, through our CTE program, uh, Ms. Mark and, and her guys, uh, we also can sometimes help with some of the certification. We get a reduction in some of those costs and some of those things. So um, we didn't make that this year. Um, hopefully by the time our current eighth graders get to their junior, senior level, uh, actually, that would probably be their senior year when they could take that actual specific one. Uh, we'll have that in place. But um, we try to reach out as many certifications as we can for our students that are meaningful, that they can actually be successful with. Um, and then our state also guides us on some of those. So it'll depend on uh, what the state allows us to offer and those kind of things. So I have another question. It says, if a student is already taking a language class in eighth grade, will that credit also be used for high school? Or will they have to take an additional two years of language? So that's a great question. Um, so the Spanish one that our current eighth graders are enrolled in, uh, that counts as their high school credit. So currently this year, uh, the only credits that are, that are middle school that a student can take for high school credit would be algebra one and Spanish one. So Spanish one, if you're currently enrolled in Spanish one, next year you would enroll in Spanish two. Okay, so if you pass successfully pass Spanish two and you don't want to take any more uh, foreign languages, then then you are essentially done with your world language uh, graduation requirement. So yes, the, the current Spanish one class at the middle school uh, is acceptable for uh, the high school credit. Um, so let's see, we're getting some more questions. Which. Oh, okay, so Ms. Raina is going to come up. We have a question about how would online students talk to counselors, uh, So, which is a great question, especially for the world that we're in right now. So Ms. Raina is going to help answer that question. Thank you. Um, like um, our principal said, uh, Dr. Skinner, how would online students talk to counselors? So a um, bunch of different ways. First, you can always email us. Um, also, you can always call us. We're available all the time. Um, we do have a secretary that you can call. If we're not there, um, you can leave a message with her and we'll call you back as soon as we can. And we're also available Zoom. We can Zoom um, to you, uh, schedule a Zoom meeting and, and meet with you at any time. So we're available email, uh, uh, by the phone or by Zoom. So, you know, pretty much all those three ways. So, and we'd love to talk to you about anything so all right thank you so so yeah that, that is a little bit tricky for the times that we're in right now uh, so our students who are currently remote uh we've got some some step-by-step -step instructions we've got uh, several things like that but most importantly we have our counselors uh and along with the counselors at the middle school who are very uh, knowledgeable of, of working through that so uh, if you have questions let us know we'll be glad to work with that at this time i'm gonna have Ms. mark come up we have a question about the benefits of, uh, of taking an ag mechanics or welding class so our Ag Mechanics Pathway, they offer a career certification that's AWS, which is a welding certification. Um, with this certification, students um, can be hired on into industry and that kind of thing um, with that certification. However, in addition to that, um, it's just learning the skill about welding and fabricating and um, and building different types of projects. So that's the, big, the biggest thing about Ag Mechanics. Um, there's another question that has come in about does principles of InfoTech count for high school credit? Principles of Information Technology is a high school credit course. However, we do not have any courses that follow that um, at the high school level. So it, it's just going to be an extra elective for those students um, as we don't have any of the classes that follow it to make a full pathway. All right. Uh, we did have one question about what percentage of students typically pass the college exams for AP courses. Um, I, I'm going to, we're, we're not going to be able to answer that completely um, accurate because we have a wide range. We have uh, probably 20, 15 different AP tests and those range, uh, range vastly. Uh, we have some that our students are very, very successful at. We have some that are, um, that we would like to improve upon. Uh, and so to, to give an exact percentage number wouldn't be very fair to the teachers or the students of those programs because th there's different levels within them. Uh, with AP, there's, there's just a wide range of, of discipline areas. If you have a, a specific question about like a specific AP course itself, uh, I, would, I would have you reach out to Ms. Joanne Taylor, uh, who spoke to us earlier. Uh, Ms. 
Taylor could, could get you information directly related to the AP course and what you're looking at taking. Uh, but to be able to give you a, 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 an exact percentage, because also not all of our students end up sitting for the exam either. So you can sit for the AP course and not pay to take your exam, and then you don't get the college credit, you just have the instruction. Um, and so uh, there's, there's a lot of numbers in there. It varies very vastly amongst the different discipline areas uh, as far as the passing percentage. So, so I would encourage that question to go to Ms. Taylor directly if you want to email her and ask her about a specific course. Uh, we have another question that just came in. Um, and so I want to encourage if you have any questions to go ahead and do the Q&A now. Uh, this is actually the last question that we have posted. So uh, if we don't receive any more over the next minute or so, then we're going to go ahead and wrap up tonight. But the next question is, uh, is going to be uh, for Ms. Mark. Can you come up and answer that for us? So the question is, does BIM fall into a high school pathway? So BIM is a technology class that is offered at the middle school currently. Um, it is in a pathway. It does fall into a pathway here at the high school. It's the business management pathway. Um, BIM is only offered um, at the middle school. So um, principles of business would be the student's next course in that pathway. Um, we do have four credits worth of courses here at the high school um, for that pathway. So they would actually end up with a few extra um, a little, credits than necessary. All right, did we just receive one more question? Okay. Um, so that looks like all of our questions. We uh, will wait just another second longer to make sure uh, that we don't have anything else come through. Okay. All right, so, so at this point, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap that up unless we receive one quickly. Uh, our ladies who are working the questions may be responding to if it's just a simple yes or no. Uh, so we'll go ahead and wrap this up, but we thank you for your time tonight. Uh, thank you for, for taking a little bit of time to help your child make the best decision possible. Uh, this is an academic journey that we're all on together. Uh, and so it's very important that we have a partnership with our parents. Uh, it takes a, takes a team to, to get us from point A to point B. And ultimately, we'll, we'll be celebrating uh, walking across the stage of graduation in the year 2025. Uh, and so congratulations, parents, for, for getting your student to, to this point, your child to this point. Uh, and thank you for, for being here with us tonight. Again, if you have questions, let us know. We'll be sending out the link to our course catalog uh, later this week, along with the link to the recording of, of this video, uh, the presentation tonight. So that way, uh, if you need to go back and refer to any questions that we have. So any, any, any questions? Okay, so at this point in time, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys. Uh, hope wish you all the best uh, for the rest of the school year. And we look forward to seeing you guys all in August. Thank you.